This is Known Podcast, hosted by Dustin Bennett, the lead pastor of Known Victory Church in Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. Known Podcast is dedicated to helping you grow closer to Jesus, unleashing the power of your creativity, and developing you as a leader. We hope you enjoy today's episode. Well, welcome back, Known Podcast. Excited again for a new episode. Thank you for joining the conversation again today. It's always an honor to have you listen and take part and be a part of this conversation that we're learning on how we can grow closer to Jesus, how we can really cultivate creativity in our lives, and how we can all grow as leaders. And, you know, I'm sure you've heard the saying before, walk the extra mile or go the extra mile. You've heard this maybe in business and management at your restaurants or at church or in your relationships, you know, walk the extra mile or go the extra mile. And this saying is often used to describe doing whatever it takes to satisfy a customer or maybe making a special effort to accomplish something for your spouse Uh, or going above and beyond for your kids to put all your energy into something special, something amazing for somebody, to just go the extra mile, to do whatever it takes, to make the sacrifice in order to make somebody's experience um, better, to make their experience better. And again, this is a saying that we've heard all over the place, but this this actually is derived um, from from something that Jesus said uh, on his Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew chapter 5 and 6 and 7. And in this, there's so many great concepts and so many things that we can learn. But this concept of of go the extra mile or walk the extra mile actually comes from this moment of what Jesus is teaching. And it, and it says this in Matthew chapter 5, verse 38 to 41, says this. You have heard that it was said, eye for eye and tooth for tooth. But I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you on the right cheek, turn to them the other cheek also. And if anyone wants to sue you, take off your shirt hand and hand over your coat as well. If anyone forces you to go one mile, go with them two miles, right? And so we see this concept, you know, uh, if, if someone asks you to go one mile, go with them two miles. And if we look at this, there's so much in this. Um, but eye for eye, which is what he starts with, right? He's saying that in, in their culture in the day, uh, eye for eye or tooth for tooth, and if we know these sayings, it's the same in our culture today, it's the same as we think today, is that for us in society, we believe that if somebody makes us suffer, we should make them suffer in the same capacity, if not more. So if somebody, he's saying, if somebody takes your eye, our responsibility as people is to take their eye. If somebody hurts us, someone punches us in the face, we say, no, yeah, you know what? I'm going to punch you right back. I'm going to punch you right back. And so there's so much when it comes to eye for eye that in our culture, same as in Jesus's culture, we live in a culture where revenge is really our motivator, where everything we do is is based on if somebody hurts us, if we have a bad business deal with someone, we're like, I'm going to, I'm going to make them suffer as well. I'm going to leave them bad reviews or whatever. And so it's, we live in this culture of revenge where again, if you try and take my eye, I'm going to take your eye. If you try and hurt me, I'm going to try and hurt you. If you hurt my family, I'm going to hurt your family. If you hurt my business, I'm going to hurt your business. We live in this culture of revenge. And Jesus, in this moment, he just shifts this whole thing right on its head. He shifts all of it in this moment as he's teaching on this mountain. He says, we we see, we hear eye for eye, tooth for tooth, but... I tell you, do not resist an evil person. If anyone slaps you in the right cheek, turn them the other cheek also. He's saying, if somebody hurts you, it's not your job to give revenge. It's not your responsibility to make them suffer in the same capacity that you suffered. He's saying, no, it's time for you to turn the other cheek. It's time for you to say, you know what? You may have hurt me, but I'm going to take my control back. You said I have to walk one mile. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to walk two miles because this goes against all of our logic. Everything that we believe about revenge, about suffering, is like, no, it's not about showing revenge. It's not about making other people suffer. It's about being generous. It's about serving. It's about loving. Even when people treat you poorly, he's saying, turn the other cheek. Do not try and slight them. Do not try and hurt them. Do not try and show them revenge. No, turn the other cheek. If they ask you to walk one mile, no, no, don't just walk one. You walk two miles. Because... We cannot control when people, how people treat us. We cannot control how people treat our business or treat our family or treat our spouse or treat our kids. We cannot control that. But what we can control is how we respond. We can either respond with generosity or we can respond with aggression. 
I think a lot of us in our culture, again, teachers, you know, if someone hurts you, you hurt them right back. You steal from them, you take from them, whatever it takes to make them know that they've made you suffer, to make them know how painful it was for you. And scholarly versions of this verse refer to a practice of imprisonment by the Roman law on Jews. Any Roman soldier could order a Jewish civilian on the way to carry his baggage, mainly containing armory, for one Roman mile. A Roman mile is roughly 1.45 kilometers. This was a painful task. And as the poor unlucky fellow would carry 40 to 50 kilograms of weight. And once the mile is over, the surgeon can drop it and get relieved and go back. He'd walk one mile, and then he'd have to walk all the way back to where he was, right? If he was at work or at home, whatever, he'd have to walk all the way back another mile back. So in the culture in the day, they didn't have a choice, right? If a Roman soldier came to them and said, hey, you're carrying my bag one mile, they, didn't, they couldn't say no. They couldn't say, no, I'm busy, no ifs, ands, or buts, yes, sir. And they would grab it, and they would walk the mile. They did not have a choice. They didn't have control. They didn't have the power to say no. They just had to obey and say, okay, I'm going to take this bag. I'm going to carry your weight, <coughs> and I'm going to go forward, and I'm going to take this one mile. You didn't have a choice. In the matter, you couldn't hop on your hoverboard, you couldn't go on your motorbike, you couldn't strap on your rollerblades, you couldn't throw on the heelys. You had to carry the weight one mile, no ifs, ands, or buts. You did not have a choice. Jesus is teaching that instead of grumbling, we are generous. Right? Instead of grumbling, we are generous. Instead of complaining about our lack of control, we use the only control we still have to give more, be kind, and don't retaliate. This is what Jesus is teaching us. So what is it? What does walk an extra, the extra mile? What does it mean to actually walk the extra mile in our lives? I want to give us three things today that I think will help you uh, as a follower of Jesus, that I think will help you as a leader. Number one is that walk the extra mile is customer service. How are you serving your family? How are you serving your customers? How are you serving your church? How are you serving your small group? How are you serving your friends? How are you serving your enemies? Are you just serving and doing the bare minimum just to get by? Are you just serving because you have to? It's your job. It's like, you know what? My job is to serve. So I'm going to serve in the hotel. I'm going to serve at my job. I'm just going to do it because I have to. That's what I'm getting paid for. Remember one time, Beth and I, we were, we were driving uh, home, uh, back, back home from visiting my family, which is about a three hour drive away. Uh, from us in Calgary. And so we were driving these three hours and there's a, there's a spot right in between Calgary and Edmonton called Red Deer. And in Red Deer, we always stop and we always, you know, grab food or we go to the washroom. And we went in one time uh, to, to, to one of these restaurants, uh, you know, in Red Deer and we stopped there. And, you know, we went into one of the restrooms there and it was disgusting, like absolutely like a, like a horror movie. And so we're, we're, and so Beth comes out. She's like, "Yo, this is horrible." So she goes to the employee and says, "Hey, uh, I just want you to know, like, your, your restroom is like really bad. I think you you should probably clean it." And the guy looked at her dead in the face. He says, "Yo, they do not pay me enough for that." That's what he said to her. He said, "They do not pay me enough for that." And I thought, bro, then find somebody that they pay enough to clean the bathroom, right? Like, we're your customers. We're not asking for a lot. We're just asking for a clean bathroom. And this guy said, no, I do not get paid enough for that. You know, walking the extra mile is saying, you know what? It doesn't matter what my salary is. It doesn't matter what my compensation is. It doesn't matter. What matters the most is making sure we're taking care of the people around us. Yes, they might not pay you enough to clean the bathroom, but go find somebody who does. Or go find somebody that they are paying enough. Go find somebody whose responsibility it is. Don't put the pressure back on me as your customer. Customer service is walking the extra mile. Whatever it takes to make sure that the people are being served properly, doing whatever it takes to make sure that the people are being loved and cared for in a proper way as leaders, as parents, as pastors, as friends, our job is to walk the extra mile to serve the people around us, whether they're our enemy, whether they're our friend, our job, our responsibility is to walk the extra mile and serve them. Walking the extra mile means not just doing what we have to do, right? You know, his job was, you know, running the cash, right? You know, taking our order, running the cash. That was his job. But it's not just doing the job we have to do, but it's making sure that, that the people feel cared for and loved in the process. 
That's what it means to walk the extra mile is I'm not just going to do the bare minimum. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that you feel cared for, to make sure that you know that I desperately care about you. I'm not just going to do the one mile. I'm not just going to do what's mandatory. I'm not just going to do what's required. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that you know I love you. I'm going to do whatever it takes to make sure that you know I care about what you're going through. I'm going to do whatever it takes. Are you willing to walk the extra mile or are you just willing to do the bare minimum? Are you just like, I'm clocking in, clocking out, showing up late, leaving early? No, show up early, leave late, be ready to serve the people around you. You might not have the answers. You might not have the paycheck. You might not have the responsibility, but do whatever it takes to make sure that you know the people around you, again, whether they're treating you well or not, know that you actually care and love them. Number, number two, walk the extra mile is unconditional love. We love, serve, and care for, for uh, we love, we serve, and we care for, and we don't expect anything in return, right? We love, we serve, and we care for people and we do not have any expectations on anything from them. Just because you love your kids does not mean they owe you anything. Just because you love your employees does not mean they owe you anything. Just because you love your spouse does not mean that they owe you anything. They owe you nothing. And a lot of us, the only time we love, the only time we serve, the only time we care for people is when we expect something in return from them. If you're leading your family with expectations on what your kids are going to give to you because you gave them an allowance, good luck. We love and care and serve people and we expect nothing in return. Imagine you're that soldier. You have your power trip. You say, hey, take the bag carry it one mile. This is your job because I'm asking you. It's a requirement by the law that you will carry my bag one mile. So the guy carries it one mile, smile on his face. He's not complaining. He's not grumbling. He's just walking and talking to you. He's saying, he's just walking and talking to you. You get to the one mile mark. You're expecting him to put the bag down. He just keeps walking. He doesn't hesitate. He doesn't grumble. He says, yeah, I'm just going to keep on walking. I'm going one more mile. I'm going one more mile into the future. <coughs> I'm going one more mile forward. Be why? Because I care. Why? Because so the soldier's looking at him saying, what are you doing? You're only supposed to go one mile. Why are you going to? This bag is heavy. I know because it's my bag. I packed it. I'm the one who knows what's inside of it. I'm the one who, who's been carrying it all day. I'm just asking you to go one mile. And you say, oh, I'm going two. I'm going to keep on walking. You know what that means is that you're actually going two more miles, right? Because you're walking one from where you were. Then you're walking another. And then you have to walk back two miles. That's four miles. That's a long time to be carrying a heavy bag and going for this walk. And it's not even your bag. You don't even know what you're carrying. Imagine that soldier when you just keep on walking, no complaining, no hesitation, just pure generosity. You have now lost the power as that soldier. You aren't forcing anything anymore, right? You're not, they're not doing this because they have to. They're doing this because they want to. They're not doing this because you're forcing them. They're doing this because they are choosing to do it. And so what we do when we walk the extra mile, we take back the power. Yes, people will mistreat us. Yes, people will be mean to us. Yes, people will be rude to us. And we do not have power, the power. We do not have the control over that. But what we do have the control over is what we do after the requirement. A lot of us are going through life just doing the bare minimum, just doing the bare requirement. And it's time for us to walk the extra mile, to put in the energy, to put in the effort, to put the more in that our families need, that our businesses need, that our churches need. Are you willing to go the extra mile? Not because you're going to get something in return, but just to prove, just to show how much you actually care about the people around you. Do you care? I remember one time I was helping a friend um, demo his house and we were taking out 
you know, some some stuff, throwing it in the bin. Yeah, this is like a day's work. So I went in, I worked, did a few hours, and he's like, yo, I owe you, man. I'm like, you don't owe me anything. I'm not doing this because I want something from you. I'm doing this, first of all, because I want to spend time with you. Number two, I'm doing this because I care about you. Number three, I'm doing this out of, the, out of my heart. I'm not doing this because you owe me anything. We need to stop serving people and having expectations that they're going to sh- give us something in return. We have to stop expecting something in return when we serve people. Our responsibility is to serve Our responsibility is not to be owed something. You know, Jesus going to the cross is the most beautiful expression of unconditional love of all time. He traded our sin for his life. No strings attached. He walked the extra mile so we didn't have to. No strings attached. All we have to do is give him our life. All we have to do is become followers of him. To believe he is who he says he is. That's it. There's no, there's no, you know, you better act this way. You better do this. You better do this. No, follow Jesus. That is the most selfless act of all time. And I'm so grateful that God shows me unconditional love. And then number three is walk the extra mile is stepping out of the ordinary. You know, a lot of us in our relationships, we stop at the first mile. In our reality, this isn't bad, right? It's not bad to stop at the first mile. That's our requirement, right? That's what we're getting paid for. You know, that's, you know that, that's, that's what my salary is based on. I'm doing the minimum. I'm just doing what I have to do. It's not wrong. It's not bad. It's very typical. It's very ordinary. This is average, right? We're just doing the average. You know, the ordinary, the typical, the common is, is just the first mile. That's average, you know? Doing your job for your paycheck is average. Loving your kids, the, the bare minimum is average. Loving your spouse, the bare minimum is average. Serving your, your, your coworkers, the bare minimum is average. But I truly believe that we are not called to be ordinary. I think we are called to be extraordinary. As followers of Jesus, we have access to the mind of Jesus. And we are a new creation. People should know that we are followers of Jesus by how we treat them, right? John 13 verse 35 says this. By this, everyone will know you are my disciples if you love one another. The only way people are going to know you're a follower of Jesus is by how you love. Right? The only way people are going to know that you're a follower of Jesus is by how you treat the least of these. How you treat the widows and the orphans. How you treat your spouse and how you treat your kids and how you treat your employees. That's how they will know you're a follower of Jesus. That's how what they will know you're a disciple of Jesus is by how you love them. The ordinary is not love. The ordinary is just a bare minimum. And I believe that we are called to be, to, to be extraordinary, not because of our own abilities, but be, be based on how we love how we care, how we, how we serve is how people will know we're followers of Jesus is by how we treat them. You know, oftentimes the people around us, our enemies, our friends, our kids, we're the first example of what it means to follow Jesus. We're the first thing that they see when it comes to what is this Jesus What is this church? You are the first example that they will see. They will know that we're followers of Jesus. They will know we're his disciples by how we treat them. Let us learn to walk the extra mile. Let us learn to take the extra step. Let us learn to move forward by serving and loving the people around us, even if they aren't treating us well. You know, there's a story that came out. Um, from a courtroom in 2018. And it's the story of Brotham Jean and Amber Geiger. And I'm just going to read this. It says this. It was an unusual scene at the sentencing of a former Dallas police officer who was found guilty by murdering an unarmed black man in his own apartment. Amber Geiger, the white woman convicted in the 2018 killing of Brotham Jean, was embraced not only by her victim's brother, but the judge who presided over the case. I love you as a person. I don't wish anything bad on you, said 18-year-old Brant Jean, before asking for permission to hug Geiger. When District Judge Tammy Kemp said, yes, Brant 
wiped a tear from his eye before stepping off the witness stand, and the two embraced tightly in the middle of the courtroom. You have this moment where this one brother is testifying uh, against the murder of his own brother, and he looks and says, hey, I love you as a person, and I don't wish anything bad on you. And he says, hey, can I go give her a hug? You know, this is a story of love, of walking the extra mile, of forgiveness in a way that doesn't make sense, in a way that I don't even think we can fully comprehend or even begin to understand the pain but the beauty of an embrace in the middle of a broken moment. You know, for us to walk the extra mile as leaders, for us to walk the extra mile as believers, for us to walk the extra mile as parents or as spouses or as friends or as enemies, and for us to walk the extra mile has an ability to make a massive impact on the people around us. It has the ability to change everything in a moment, to walk that extra mile. And you know what walking the extra mile is going to be? It's going to be hard. It's going to be painful. There might even be some fear. There might even be some peer pressure to say no. It's not going to be easy. You might feel alone in it. But that's what makes it beautiful. Why? Because when someone's forcing us to do something and we choose to do it even longer, when we choose to actually give more, when we choose to take the shirt off of our own back and give it away, it makes an impact on somebody. When we take the extra step, when we go the extra mile, when we walk forward, when we bring people alongside of us, when we love people unconditionally, it makes an impact. It makes an impact if we learn to be quick to forgive and quick to serve and quick to walk the extra mile and be quick to love. Quick to walk the extra mile of customer service and quick to walk the extra mile of unconditional love and quick to walk the mile of stepping out of the ordinary. Again, the ordinary. There's nothing wrong with the ordinary. It's average, right? It's not below average. You're doing the bare minimum to get by. Very typical in our culture. But let us move away from revenge. Let us move away from the bare minimum. Let let us move away from trying to get back at people. Let us get away from conditional love. Let us get away from all these things that are trying to hold us back as leaders, as pastors, as followers of Jesus. And let us learn to love unconditionally. And step out of the ordinary, into into the extraordinary. Which is where I truly believe God is calling us to live and calling us to be and calling us to serve is a place of the extraordinary. You know, I believe uh, that you can do this and I believe that we can do this together. Thank you for joining us today for the Known Podcast. We have new content coming out every Wednesday, so make sure to come back next week for a new episode. If you haven't yet, make sure to follow us on Instagram at Known Podcast and follow us on your favorite podcast platform. See you next week.